Good to meet you, first Thank off. Thank you. And nice to meet you. I, I think before we get into listening to your interview with Jody Arias, what was it like to sit across from her? Her life is on the line. What was she like? Well, I have to tell you, I really wanted to take it all in because, um, you know, we've all been watching her in the courtroom. And I, I have to tell you, she was really compelling. She's poised. She was camera ready. She already had her makeup on. We were the second or third crew to get in there, so another crew had already provided makeup for her. Um, and she had some ground rules. She was a little bit of a diva about it. No handcuffs, no shots of the stripes on her pants. Uh, the jail had given her a sweater to wear. And um, she made us turn the cameras off to comb her hair uh, and wanted me to stand in front of the camera while she put on a little lip gloss. Total control total control and I didn't ask her a single question that she was thrown on um, and I asked her some tough questions Mike I asked her I said hey have you thought about if that jury comes back with death what that needle is gonna be like and she really was like well no I mean she seemed totally in denial I haven't gone there yet she said to me was she tough to catch off guard and again, we're listening to it just a second. It was fascinating to talk to you. I mean, did you throw her? Because she can be poised and she knows where she wants to go. I don't think I threw her. Okay. I think I think she, I did find her spinning a little here and there and certain things. Uh, you know, she has always said that she cannot remember the actual incident. And we de definitely uh, had a soundbite with her talking mm. about... Um, you know her nightmares now and how she can't get it out of her mind right the fog okay well mm -hmm. here's one that, that great question on your part uh talk about whether or not she realizes she's one of the most hated women in america let's listen to that you must know all of america sits in judgment of jody arias right now and you really have been deemed the most hated woman in america how does that make you feel i didn't know that actually um i feel a lot of love and support from people who write in and believe me and want to help me and want to be there for me and they're just I received an outpouring of love and support from other people so all of that it doesn't reach me what you make of that was that authentic or do you think she really knows that she's not well liked uh, you know I think she has a mound of mail in her uh, cell and I confirmed that uh, off the record with uh, someone in the sheriff's department they said at one point uh, before the trial even started she had so much mail in there they had to remove it all so fan mail where she would think she's supported and loved more so I don't I don't know if it's all it. fan mail but she seems to think a lot of it is fan mail and she said a lot of people are um, you know writing to her and saying thank you uh, you're a cautionary tale to me and I have left a relationship before it got to that hmm. point Wow, yeah. interesting. Well, let's listen to a little bit more again. This is KNXV. Great to talk to Amy here. Fascinating, really, to talk to you. Uh, talking about, you know, the words, I'm sorry, and, and being caught and being sorry for that. So let's listen to what Jody Arias said to you on that point. Well, I couldn't answer that I don't know if I would turn myself in. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to think that I would, mm -hmm. because that would be the right thing to do. On the other hand, it's... Can you imagine willingly giving up your freedom? It, that's a difficult decision to make. So you wouldn't have done it? I can't say that I wouldn't have. Um, I can't say that I would have. I really, I still don't know the answer to that question. Again, I'm just uh, uh, floored by, again, her poise and how she's answered. Just your thought on that, looking back. You know, she was, I think, being very honest. She, she said, you know, if, if you think about turning yourself in and losing your freedom, I don't know if I could do it. And so she was really brutally honest. You know, um, and we talked about um, her mother, you know, um, why her mother didn't testify for her on her behalf in court. Um, we talked about uh, so many different things. Um, the thing that, that really rattled me, though, was, the, you know, the fact that um, she doesn't really, I mean, it's not that she doesn't feel remorse, and she didn't say she was sorry. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think there is remorse. She is said she is sorry for the rest of her life for what happened. She didn't say, I'm sorry to his family, though, you know, and so that's what's so disturbing to so many people, yeah, I Absolutely, think. and she had opportunities in interviews and also in court. Well, let's listen to one other point in your interview again. It's okay. KNXV uh, talking about the death penalty, so let's listen to that. So, at one point, it seemed as though you were thinking about death yeah. and preferring the death penalty. Yes. So you, you have thought about it. Well, to that degree, yes. Just the fact that, I mean, I believe we're eternal. And in a sense, it's kind of like, well, if my life is over, why be a burden to my family? Why be a burden to 
the system. Why not just remove myself from this picture and move on? You know, she wanted the death penalty in that interview, and then something quickly changed within days, and she claims it was this cousin that came and told her, you know, you can't do that to your family. But they're right there. She said, why burden the system? Why burden, uh, you know, the taxpayers, uh, basically? So she was very conflicted at times. The, um, was there a moment that you'll remember, maybe not even in the interview, just of the whole experience, as you said, uh, this again has captivated it, a nation and you were there yeah. between like you and I are talking right yeah. now for a good 40 minutes we chatted um, Mike and uh, you know it was surreal um, she was just so calm and composed you know we, we interview so many people who are not comfortable on camera she and is. she is so comfortable on camera and I think more than anything I will remember that and um, I think she really uh, you know believes that she was a victim of domestic violence and um, I know that she has her haters out there uh, but did she, that comfort and poise forgive me for interrupting mm -hmm. disturb you at all like this isn't right in this situation or are you used to it with her well you know I, I this is the first time I've talked to her so no I'm, I'm not used to that it, it was a little disturbing you know um, a little rattling in in some sense because I asked her some really tough questions and she didn't miss a beat but she's had a long time to think about yeah. it too mike you almost know? five years right yeah, exactly point. give us your website if people it's, want to see more of it uh abc15.com we have the entire interview raw on there and uh we it really it's no hold bars she really answered some questions very honestly yeah I obviously we saw some of it there great to meet you thank you great you job too, mike. amy thank murphy you. uh you. joining us we'll play more of this by the way for you hln news now a little bit later in, in the afternoon